Well, hello and happy Monday to you or whichever day of the week that you choose to watch this broadcast. Welcome. I am your host, Marie Kennedy Groves. I am a life coach. I am a single mom. I'm a glam mom. I'm, I'm all the stuff. And I am in love with my life. And I know you don't hear that very much from very many people. But I have been very, very intentional on what I allow into my life and what I choose to involve myself with. So I hope that today I am able to bring you encouragement. I hope I am able to make you smile, maybe even laugh out loud, and just maybe lighten life up a little bit. So we are going to jump right into our topic today of self-parenting. That's right. I know we love to have conversations about how to parent children. And those conversations are amazing. Uh, I know that as I was raising my kids, I had many, many conversations with different people that I respected uh, so much on how they raised their kids and watching how their kids turned out. Um, and I would ask a lot of questions about, well, what would you do when this would happen? And what would you do here? So we ask and we inquire uh, a lot about how to parent our, our littles, but do we ever stop to consider self-parenting ourselves? So I wanna talk about that today. So I'm gonna ask you a question. How many of you have children or maybe if you don't have children, you've at least babysat children or watched children, or at least you've been around children. I think that should pretty much cover all of us. Am I right? I believe so. So, you know, have you ever been so frustrated with a child? Maybe it was because they, they weren't listening. Um, you kept telling them no or not to do this and they kept doing it. Uh, maybe it was because they were bullying another child and it just sent you crazy. Maybe they were giving you attitude. Have you ever had a child that gave you attitude? If you haven't, that's a real fun scenario. I've been there. It's real fun. Um, how about a child that was talking back to you? Uh, that can be very, very frustrating. Also, you know, I mean, we, we talk about all of this stuff and, and all of those things can be extremely frustrating on their own. Sometimes it's a mix, a mixed bag of all of it. Um, but you kind of get the picture of what I'm talking about. It's just can be extremely frustrating parenting or even if you're a guardian, uh, just watching over a child. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure that we probably all have had these experiences on some level, whether you're an actual parent or not. I'm telling you one thing, I, go out to eat, go to the mall, go to Walmart. <laughs> I promise you, before you get out of that restaurant, that mall or Walmart, you are probably going to see some things out of children that just make you go, oh my gosh, if that was my child, I don't know, well, I do know what I would do. So as a parent or a legal guardian, or, you know, maybe you're just a present adult in a situation where you are the, the adult that's, that's with the minors, um, 
but you know, it's it's expected of us to provide and act accordingly um, with children uh, and, and provide certain things for them if we are the parent or the guardian or the acting adult in the situation. And some of those things, uh, you know, that uh, I see that we, it's kind of understood that we are to provide is obviously protecting, uh, protecting them, making sure that they're good, um, you know, making sure they're fed, making sure that they're loved. Um, you know, just we're expected to make sure that these children are safe. And I think we can all agree on that, that that's just kind of the understood expectation of you when you are a parent or a guardian or the adult in, in a situation. Um, but you know, I know a big part of parenting for me with my kids was trying to help them know and learn how to deal with all of these emotions that they would have, um, it, depending on the circumstance. I mean, it, it, little people don't know what to do with all the emotions that come up inside of them from frustration, from not getting their way, from maybe just feeling overwhelmed. I know that um, there's a lot of kids, let me, let me let me backtrack just a minute. A lot of parents live vicariously through their kids because they wish that they had been given the opportunity to maybe play a sport or play in the band at school or be more involved in whatever. So their kids come along and they're like, well, I'm going to make sure that my kids have this opportunity, you know, to do what they want to do. And da -da 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 -da. what I, where the, I think we err on the side we err on in that scenario is we get our kids involved in so many things that we wish we had had the opportunity to do never taking into consideration, does this child really want to do this or not? Or is this my desire for this child to do this? And then you're racing them from school to sports, to this, to that, to racing home and then having to do homework. And I mean, the child has no downtime. Can anybody relate? And one thing that I realized with my children is my kids, sure, they enjoyed stuff, going and doing and sports and all of that, but they also desperately needed downtime. They did, they, they operated so much better when it wasn't such a rat race of racing here, racing there. Come on, you got to hurry. Come on, grab your stuff. Why aren't you ready? I mean, the parents are frustrated. The kids are frustrated. And are you really accomplishing anything except just all these emotions that everybody's trying to process through? Don't know if you can relate to this, but I talk to a lot of parents that are exactly what I have just described. And they can't figure out, they've lost the joy of parenting <laughs> because that it's not even fun anymore because it's just, they're exhausted and crazy chasing this crazy schedule that they've put in place. And many times I say, have you even asked your child if they even want to do that anymore? Well, we committed to it and they're going to finish it. Okay. At the expense of what? All of you being crazy? All of you screaming and yelling and acting a fool with each other? I say, 
cut the sport, cut the event, have peace. I mean, really, at what expense are they going to finish what you've committed them to? I'm just putting it out there. So I want to know how many times have you said things or maybe you've done things in these types of scenarios with children where you were so frustrated that you said things or you did things that you would give anything to take back. I think anybody that has been in these types of scenarios would be able to say that they can relate, that there are things that they wish they could go back and change and handle differently, but their emotions got, got away on them and they did not stop themselves in the moment and maybe said things or did things that they wish they had not. Well, I'm with you because I have been there and I have done that. I think we all have. So we are going to go on a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about how to self-parent ourselves to avoid those types of scenarios so that we don't have those types of regrets and how that is going to affect the behavior of your littles as well. So, if you have not already, please go either to WYTB7 on YouTube or you can uh, find them on Facebook. You can hit the donate button. Donate any amount because it is appreciated and it keeps broad broadcasts such as this on the air. And we love bringing you real authentic content in today's world, real, real issues that we all face in today's world that can give you encouragement and help you to just be a better person, be the best version of you. And so that is what self-parenting is all about. So we will be right back after the commercial break to talk about the self-parenting part of this frustration that we deal with in our beautiful lives that we live. I'll be right back. I'm Dr. Raquel Tolson, host of Blessed Mindset Matters. Is your mind on your money? Are you ready to be more intentional with your money? Then get my free booklet, Mind on My Money, Plan, Pocket, Protect. In this booklet, I offer you practical suggestions on planning intentionally, pocketing wisely, and protecting your money. Get the booklet at www.raykeltolson.com. That's R-A-Y-K-E-L-T-O-L-S-O. In. Get your free copy today. Well, hello and welcome back. I am your host, Marie Kennedy Groves, and I am thrilled to be with you today, you know, talking about self parenting. So, if you caught the first half, we talked about the frustration that comes with children and all the emotions that come with children and the, the, how it can like literally bring you to a level that you almost didn't even know existed inside of you. 
And how do I know? Yeah, I've lived it. I have lived it. So the second half of this segment, we're going to talk about self-parenting, not parenting our kids, but parenting ourselves. Okay. Because that is probably, quite honestly, more important to parent yourself than it is to parent your children. And I'm going to explain why. So one of the most important tools that I have learned over the years is how to self-parent. Um, you know, a lot of people will say to me, Marie, what's self-parenting? Like, how do you parent yourself? And I'll tell them it's literally exactly what it says. It's self-parenting. So parenting yourself is all the things that we talked about that's expected for an adult to do with children. It's loving yourself. It's learning how to love yourself. It's learning how to protect yourself. It's learning how to make sure you're safe. It's putting the proper nutrition into your body on a daily basis so that you are giving the right fuel in your body so that you can function properly. Um, it's giving yourself time out. It's forgiving yourself. It's correcting yourself. And most of all, it's giving yourself grace when you just don't get it right. Because we're not going to get it right 100% of the time. Last time I checked, I'm human. And I make mistakes. And I would probably think that you do too. So if you have had, um, if you had a bad childhood, or maybe you've just had a really poor parenting example in your life, it is so, 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 so important that you practice parenting yourself the way you wished you had been parented. So, and, it, and let me just, let me just say this. It's never too late to start this journey. I have a coaching client that I completely adore that if I remember correctly, I believe they just turned 80 years old. And they are learning this concept for the first time in their lives at 80 years old. So what I can tell you from, again, experience, because I, I like to talk to you in real time, is if an 80-year-old can learn how to self-parent, you can. And to see this beautiful individual start to get these concepts that we talk through, and I begin to see them start using these tools. I'm just going to tell you, it's probably one of the most beautiful things that I have had the privilege to watch in a long time. It is, it is, it, it just fills my heart full. So it's never too late to start practicing self-parenting. As you begin to parent yourself, one thing is you're, you're going to begin to notice this huge shift that starts to take place in relationships that are all around you. And 
the reason that the shift begins to take place is because as you self parent, you start showing up different. You will start showing up different. You are not going to be so emotional because you're going to be able to talk yourself through, parent yourself through situations. And you're, you'll learn to do it faster and faster the more you practice this. But, you know, I have many times when the frustration with my kids was getting high and the situation was getting intense, I have literally said to them, mom needs a time out because I don't want to say or do anything that I'm going to regret. So I'm taking a time out and it would be in your best interest to not come knocking on my door. You need to leave mom alone for her time out and we will come back around, we'll circle back around to this situation later after I've calmed down and I've had my time out. Guys and gals, let me tell you, I don't know who told us or where we got the idea that in a situation that is getting heated, that we have to resolve it all right now. No, these kids, they're going to listen and they're going to do what I say. And I don't care if there's bloodshed. They're going to do this. Really? Why did we, whoever told us, where did we ever get the idea that we had to be right 100% of the time and everything had to be resolved right then? When emotions are too high, maybe there's lack of sleep. Maybe I, there could be a million different scenarios. But when emotions are too high, that is never a time to resolve anything because the emotions are too high. So to be quite honest with you, it's never going to be resolved um, properly. Can I say that? When emotions are high, a situation is never going to be resolved properly when the emotions are here. You need to let the situation calm down because people are going to think so much more clearly when the emotion is taken out of it. So please, I beg you, whether you have kids, whether it's in the office, whether it's at church, yes, I said church, I, I don't care where you're at. It's okay to say, time out, time out. I need to take a time out and we can circle back around and visit the situation. But right now I need to take a time out. And I promise you, the situation will appreciate your time out. Whenever I walked away from the situation and I was able to, normally I would go to my, to, to my bedroom and shut the door and I would just, you know, I would calm down. I would think about what was going on. I would try to put myself in my kid's shoes, like try to think from their perspective, why they maybe did what they did. Um, I had, I had a lot of different tools in my tool belt that I would use to, to calm down and bring it back under control. Sometimes we would be able to come back out and circle back around and talk about that, you know, 
the same day. Many times we didn't talk about it the same day because they needed to calm down too. There was many times that we had what we called family meetings and we would sit down in the living room or in the kitchen and we, I would tell them, listen, we're gonna talk about the situation. Each one of you is gonna have the floor to, to say your piece about how you feel about what your issues are with the situation. And you know what? If you need to use some strong language, if you're in a safe place, don't be disrespectful, but say what you've got to say. And we will not interrupt. And each person is going to have their turn. And myself and my two kids resolved many a high intense situation by doing that. Because they felt heard. There was a lot of tears that were shed because all of a sudden, all the emotion was out of it because they weren't, they, they said their piece. Yeah, there was emotion. And when they said their piece, once they said their piece and they felt heard, then the tears would come. And they would be like, you know, I didn't, what, once we all said our piece, oh, I didn't realize that you saw it that way. Oh, now I can understand why you were so upset. Guys. This self and gals, these self, the self parenting is for real. It's for real, real. So what I also have witnessed, and I know we're about to run out of time, but what I also have witnessed is when you start parent, self parenting yourself, okay? You can tell your kids a million times how they're supposed to act. But what I know, this is what I know, they are going to act out what they see much more than what they hear. So what I'm witnessing today is my kids will still get hot mad at each other, okay? But they, they don't go off on each other like they once did. I see them removing their self from the room, from the situation. They might go in their room, shut the door. Now they, they'll start texting mom like a fool. You need to take care of this. You need to tell them, rah, rah, rah. you need to talk to him. You need to talk to her. <laughs> but they remove themselves from the situation before they said or did something that they were going to regret. Who are they mimicking? And I love it. So I am going to say, as we run out of time, if you are very intrigued with this whole self-parenting thing, and you would like to talk with me one-on-one -on -one about maybe some situations you've got going on in your own life right now, and you're like, okay, this really resonated with me, but I need more because I know 30 minutes is, is, is a very short amount of time to really talk through this. I offer a free life coaching session um, to anyone that is interested in doing that. A lot of times when you're looking at a life coach, I always say the one reason why I always give the first session free is you've really got to see if we're a good match. because. I'm not for everybody. And I know that. And I'm okay with that. So if that is something that you would like to have a free life coaching session, please reach out to me. You can reach out to me at Marie Kennedy Groves on Facebook. You can also email me at World Changer. No, I'm sorry. That Instagram is World Changer for Life. My email is Healing Waters. Why am all of a sudden I'm trying to remember what my, um, 
Heat Marie Groves at HealingWaters.info. Huh? Yeah, I just forgot that. Just like that. <laughs> Email me at Marie Groves uh, at HealingWaters.info, and we can sh uh, set up a time where we can um, chat a little bit further about this. So I would love, love, love to connect with you. I hope that this helps you in a situation that you're facing right now. And it gives you encouragement that, hey, there's other ways to handle it. Maybe this is a solution for you. Thank you so much for joining me. We will see you next Monday at noon, Eastern Standard Time, WITV7. We love you all. Bye.